Hey everybody, it's Warren and Julie. Hello. And where are we? <laughs> we are in Istanbul, Turkey. For those of you that are our regular viewers, you are aware that we travel with our two dogs, Arya and Katie. And before we went to Turkey, I was under the wrong impression that dogs really weren't welcome in Turkey. Well, surprise, we've got good news. If you're a pet lover, dogs, as well as cats, are welcome to come along with you in Turkey. So let's check out our experience. First off, we chose to stay in an Airbnb because it's easier to find a place that will welcome a dog and feel more like you're at home rather than staying in a hotel, especially if you're on a long stay. So this is the market Julie goes to quite often. It's on the street. We live up the hill there and this is where we've been doing our shopping. The area we based ourselves has lots of hills and lots of stairs and parking is very limited but the location is great for public transportation. You're not far from the ferries, you're not far from the subways or the metro. The roads are also narrow. It's been compared to San Francisco as far as the hilliness. One of the features of the Airbnb we stayed in is it's got a great rooftop terrace that allows you to look over across the Bosporus to the Asian side. So the view here is nice in the day or at night. We were here when it was a bit colder, but I could see coming up here and enjoying a cup of coffee in the morning or a glass of wine in the evening or entertaining with friends. So let's go ahead and go up the four flights of stairs to our front door and do a quick walkthrough of where we stayed here in Istanbul. So this is the living room and it's got a TV. You can stream YouTube on it, but there's uh, the internet's pretty weak here. You can check your email, stream some video, but if you're here to work and upload, um, it's not uh, very quick at all. It took about a 16 hours to do about a 20 minute video upload. And Coming through over here, kitchen was probably the best part of the house. Four burner stove, lots of room to move in here, a good size sink, dishwasher. The only thing missing is a microwave. It's got a good size refrigerator and the bathroom. Now, one thing I would say is that we were given two towels. If you're here for a long-term stay, you might want to bring your own towels. Similar to bedding, we had one set of bedding. And so if you're here for a long-term stay, that's not too cool. But fortunately, there is a washing machine over here. And we've done a lot of laundry, keeping up with stuff. So this is where we were staying for the four weeks that we were here in Istanbul. Near Taksim. A furnished apartment like this would go for about $450 a month for a normal rental. This was $1,285 on the Airbnb rate. Parking was not dependable nearby, so we parked about a 15 minute walk away and paid $130 for the 30 days or 1,680 Turkish lira. Today, we're going to breakfast and we're gonna go to the left side around the mosque here in Taksim Square and just follow the wall around the back. Okay, so we're gonna come through here. You'll see this train tracks will come down this direction. You got this little building here and just keep on going straight behind the mosque. And once you hit the end of the road here where the mosque comes back here, you're gonna come down this street and we're gonna take this second right. And our destination is gonna be Cafe and Bistro Kafka. So you ready to go check out this uh, restaurant that's recommended by who? Our Airbnb host. Our Airbnb host, so let's go visit. Mm -hmm. Our first impression of the restaurant was positive. It was clean, 
and there were several different dining areas each with a unique flavor and a different view a couple upstairs and one downstairs Arya liked the window Katie just liked anywhere where mama's lap was we got our cappuccino ordered a big breakfast and then we saw Amarilla he's actually our Airbnb host he's part owner of this restaurant and he made sure that we felt welcomed we ordered the big breakfast without the meat and it was a great price 108 Turkish lira less than eight dollars and our Airbnb host actually picked up the tab the dogs felt comfortable at the restaurant and they enjoyed the outside entertainment of watching the cats play that was a lot and I'm full. <laughs> I'm pretty full as well and you know we did have Arya here with us as well and I don't know if she's full per se. I gave her a little bit of food because we needed some help. I'm content. I'm, I'm quite content. Thanks. Katie's always discontent. <laughs> okay. Here's a look at the menu. Currently it's 14 Turkish lira to the dollar and the value was great. We actually went back to this restaurant quite a few times after this initial visit. We just enjoyed the food. We enjoyed Amarillo's company when he was there. And the dogs also felt very comfortable there. Now, I will let you know, we went to quite a few restaurants with the dogs. We were invited in with the dogs. I know a lot of people confuse Turkey with Arab countries and how they may feel about animals. Here in Turkey, they actually very much embrace dogs and pets and they take care of their strays if you're new to our channel julie and i were traveling the world with our two dogs trying to see what it's like to live in different places different countries and sharing those experiences with you and when we travel we do have i am global health insurance on us in case there's any kind of illness that befalls us so that we have that extra peace of mind so if you're interested in i am global health insurance there is a link in the video description so if you're an employer, a frequent traveler, an expat, and looking for coverage while you're outside of your country, please consider using this link. I will receive a commission if you use the link only. If you can't find the link, email me at warrenjulietravel at gmail.com. I'll be glad to send the link to you. Here we go. It's got the uh, kind of a fried cheese type of salad there. It's grilled. A grilled cheese, I'm sorry, not fried. And so it all looks good that's gorgeous after splitting the halloumi cheese salad and having my tuna sandwich and julie's chicken curry it was time for dessert so we're doing one of julie's favorites tiramisu and let's go ahead and jump into this honey oh my gosh that's not her is soaked in alcohol mm. If you've been following Julie and I, you know that we have been to quite a few restaurants and our dogs have been to most of them. When we are out on the street, we are constantly invited to come in. When you look at these bars or these restaurants as we're walking down the street, I can tell you that probably 80% of them would let us walk in with our dogs. We were constantly invited to come in and bring our pets. We were not really expecting to find out that Istanbul was so dog friendly. Yes, there are some restaurants that will say, no, you can't come in with your dog, but that's the exception and not the rule. So I've seen the notes from people in previous videos that we've done saying, you should not be bringing a dog into a restaurant, that that's wrong and that's not welcomed. Well, maybe not in some Arab countries, but this is not an Arab country. This is a Turkish country. And at least in Istanbul, they've been very friendly with the pets. We take our dogs out to the park quite often, and there are a lot of stray dogs here. Most of them are very docile, and they've been taken care of by the community. And there's a lot of cats as well, a whole lot of cats, probably about a four to one cat to dog ratio. And as you can see, there's food out there. People are caring for these animals. You don't see them walking around, starving, looking hungry. From what I can see, the Turks do have a compassionate side for animals, and we find that quite endearing. Istanbul was quite walkable, and there were quite a few nice parks in the area, so we would take our dogs out frequently 
and let them run around sometimes off leash there were a lot of other pets in the park and even the strays though were very docile and friendly okay so we just walked through Matchka park what do you think of it this is a gorgeous park it reminds me of a zoo <laughs> yeah. i know there's no animals but it's just kind of the the feel of it but it's lovely yeah, well there were some animals there were dogs and well, cats yeah but and I, birds domestic speaking of dogs she always has to let people know she's here we have occasionally seen some Arab tourists that do seem to act awkwardly towards a dog and seem to be afraid of them, even though they may be small. That unfortunately is probably due to lack of exposure and their culture. Here in Turkey though, if you're a pet owner and you wanted to come to Istanbul, we can tell you that you will find more people that are loving towards your pets then that would be acting awkwardly. So please don't get Turkey confused with some other countries out there. They actually are very kind to the dogs and the cats and their society. And we feel very good about the relationship that the Turkish people are showing towards the cats and the dogs. At least this is what I believe is to be true in Istanbul. So now if you're new to our channel, Julie and I, we're traveling the world we're trying to see what it's like to live in different places. We're sharing our experiences with you. We typically stay two to three months in a country and we share our cost of living. So if you haven't already, please subscribe, give this video a like, and join us on our journeys and our adventures. And until next time, have a great day, everybody.